Okay, welcome back. Uh, we were discussing the stereo electronic effects uh, or stereo electronic requirements for substitution and elimination reactions. Okay, but we'll take some real uh, examples and we'll discuss mostly on the aspect of conformation and reactivity because all these things are coming under dynamic stereochemistry that is conformation and reactivity and we'll discuss the uh, the reactivity of cyclohexanes towards substitution and elimination uh, and different examples okay now if we take a cyclohexane suppose this is four tertiary butyl and cyclohexane with a substituent uh, with a Levy group at C1. Okay. Now, this can exist in two diastereomeric forms, one is the cis isomer, another is the trans isomer. Okay. So, this is the cis trans, remember the T butyl group is there, so that the conformations are locked. If this is not there, then they will become conformation, they can flip to each other. Okay. We want to study the behavior of these towards substitution reactions. Okay. Now, there are different kinds of mechanism for substitution reactions. Suppose, we do it under conditions which favor S n 1, under S n 1 conditions and this one also subjected to the same S n 1 conditions. So, if it is S n 1 that means, there will be formation of the cation and this is the first step in S n 1 reaction. It is the same cation that is generated here, okay, same cation that is generated here. Now, what happens here which one will then react at a faster rate? There are uh, again you can think in two ways, one is that when x leaves in this system there was if x is quite big say a tosyl group, if x is a tosyl OTS, then that is quite big group. So, when x leaves that leads to the release of the steric compression that it was having this 1 3 diaxial interaction in the form of 1 3 diaxial interaction. So, that uh, is is released when x departs, whereas here x when x departs that will not be the case. The other thing you can uh, other way you can think of that the energy level of this the axial compound the axial x will be higher than the energy of the equatorial x and if the carbocation that is same in both the cases is here if it is the cation then what happens it will be easier for there will be less energy uh, requirement for the axial x to be converted to the cation than the equatorial x to be converted to the cation. So, the axial isomer will react at a faster rate than the equatorial isomer because of this. Uh, if you if you remember if you carry it under the S n 1 condition. Okay. Ionization is favored in case of the axial either you can say that the release of this 1 3 diaxial strain or you can also draw this energy, the energy diagram to show the, the relative ease of the axial substituted compound over the equatorial substituted compound in forming the cation, less energy is required. Okay. Now, if you now do the same reaction under S n 2 condition. So, I add O my y minus and here y minus in the first case I did not add the nucleophile because it was S n 1. So, the anyway whatever nucleophile you add um, that is the very fast step the very fast that step. So, there will be formation of both axial and equatorial products there. Okay. So, what I am saying that when the cation is the carbocation is formed because the next step is very fast. Uh, so, the nucleophile can attack from both sides, but there may be some discrimination equatorial uh, product may be little bit more, but in theory because the product is very fast. So, there should not be any selectivity in this attack in S n 1 conditions. Okay. Whereas, in S n 2 now you have a you have the requirement of 
the y minus should approach and uh, attack from the back side of C x. That is number 1 and number 2 is the transition state involves the uh, involves a carbon that is the carbon which is being attacked that is transformed from sp 3 to a trigonal bipyramid to a trigonal uh, bipyramid structure. That means, what happens when y minus take the simple S n 2 reaction. So, in the transition state what happens you have this is suppose x delta minus and this is y that is your nucleophile and the three groups that are there. So, this is the transition state trigonal bipyramid okay, sp 2 hybridized carbon, but since both are holding uh, x and y and not very tightly, but loosely uh, because the bonds are now more or less half uh, this is half broken and this is half formed. So, the transition state is a bipyramidal transition state. So, the same thing will happen here. So, the transition state will look like this. See these three groups will be these three groups resemble these three bonds. So, these three uh, uh, bonds are will be in the plane and here it will be here it will be y delta minus and here it will be x delta minus. Okay. And in this case what will happen x here it is x delta minus and y delta minus and then the final product here the final product is sorry put the t butyl the final product is y in the equatorial position because you are replacing the x which was axial and uh, because it is s n 2. So, there will be inversion of configuration and that exactly what happened and in this case the product will be the axial one. Okay. Now, the question is which one will react at a faster rate that depends on the relative size of x and y the relative size of x and y. Okay. If y is big if y is bigger than if the size of y. So, we are saying y is bigger than x then what happens if y is bigger than x then this transition state this transition state will be less stable and this transition state will be more stable. Okay. So, if that be the case then we can say that the axial axial tocile will react at a faster rate than the equatorial tocile and in fact, a reaction has been done where y is, but remember y has to be bigger than x. So, x was x was suppose chlorine here that was not tocile x was chlorine or maybe bromine you can also tolerate bromine and you are replacing it with your y minus is s p h minus suppose which is quite big thiophenoxide. Okay. So, if you do that, so now this is your y. So, y is bigger than your x. So, what was actually reported that this reacts about 60 times faster this reacts about 60 times faster, but the, the, the number is not very important. The important thing is that the concept that why this reacts faster than this because of the size of the nucleophile is bigger than the size of the living group. So, now in the case that will cause destabilization of the transition state uh, obtained from the equatorial bromide. Okay. I hope this is clear. The next is so this is so we have discussed S n 1 first and then we have discussed the S n 2. In both the cases you see the axial isomer is uh, reacting at a faster rate of course, provided 
that size the size requirement was there no? in this SN2 case that the nucleophile has to be larger than the living group. But in uh, so if that be the case in both the cases the SN1 case or the SN2 case the axial is reacting at a faster rate. Okay. In case of um, see there are reactions which are called reactions which go via allylic rearrangement that means if you have a living group here and an allyl system and if you add the nucleophile the nucleophile can attack this carbon and then the process can go in this way. So, y is attached it is not directly attacking the carbon bearing the living group it is attacking the uh, the end carbon of the double bond okay the allylic carbon of the double bond or the gamma carbon of the double bond okay then <coughs> so what is happening this is y and the product is this okay this is what is the uh, this is called sn2 prime this is prime that is sn2 but it is not attacking the same carbon as the uh, which is contains the living group it attacks another carbon so that's why this is sn2 prime not direct sn2 okay in sn2 prime in cyclic systems see if you have a cyclohexene kind of thing i'm sorry but let's see mm, if you have a cyclohexene and you have a living group here oco say ar a living group an acetate a benzoate kind of thing living group and the group r here okay so now the nucleophile whatever nucleophile you have will attack in an sn2 prime fashion so it attacks here it goes there and that goes out okay now the question is from which side it should attack from which side it should attack in direct sn2 it should attack from the opposite side of the benzoate okay the living group in sn2 prime the nucleophile is the other way around the nucleophile attacks from the same side of the living group from the same side of the living group now you can say why is that that means i am saying the nucleophile should attack from the beta phase okay why beta phase because this is the living group is also in the beta phase okay now the question is why the answer you can uh, simply answer without writing any uh, any confirmation you can say that if the nucleophile attacks from the top phase then the negative charge that will be formed here will be in the in the bottom phase and that negative charge now will be in a will be anti to the uh, will, will be anti to this ocoph so it will be easier for that negative charge to come back and kick out the benzoate again i repeat this appears from the beta phase because the negative charge that will be generated here will be in the alpha phase and then that alpha phase negative charge for the alpha phase negative charge uh, will have easier uh, easier elimination with of the benzoate the alpha phase ne negative charge can easily displace the beta benzoate okay because they are anti to each other on the other hand if it approaches from the alpha phase then the negative charge is formed in this side and now it will be difficult because they are on the same side okay so there will be there will be difficulty in kicking out the kicking out the benzoate because they are on the same phase and they are both having the negative charge see this is uh, you are trying to uh, generate a negative charge in the same phase as the negative charge itself where it is generated okay if you want to go to the conformational level so what i i have said that if the nucleophile without going into the conformation you can say that if the nucleophile approaches from the beta phase then the double bond is here so initially that means the negative charge that is generated will be in the alpha phase okay and then this is beta so it will be now it's like a trans elimination as i said in the uh, in the case of E2 elimination, uh, it is kind of a trans anti elimination, trans elimination, the same thing here that this comes out, this comes back, and this goes out. So, there will be it is much, uh, it will be good that if they have anti relationship. Okay. So, this is without going into the 
detailed confirmation analysis, but you can uh, do a quick confirmation analysis by drawing the cyclohexene you know that is drawn in the uh, half chair confirmation. So, you can without going into any complication I will just uh, show you one approach of how to really draw the confirmation and uh, make this thing uh, look e more look uh, the actual go into the actual confirmation analysis of this S n 2 prime reaction. See this is kind of uh, uh, not correct because you are using a plain hexagonal uh, cyclohexane, but that is not the correct it is actually the cyclohexane has this type of confirmation. So, now what happens where is your acid the benzoate the benzoate is here O C O A R okay. actually see in cyclohexane these groups are pseudo axial and pseudo equatorial. Okay. So, the here the group will be up and so this will be pseudo axial O C O A R and this will be hydrogen and here there will be the pseudo axial hydrogen and here this will be pseudo equatorial hydrogen. Okay. Now, let us actually drop these two bonds just to make it less complicated because we are only concerned about, about this carbon that carbon and these two olefinic carbons. Okay. Now, the nucleophile can approach from the because this is beta. So, I said the nucleophile has to approach from the top. Okay. So, if it approaches it has to approach from the top. So, if it approaches now, so what will happen this will see this will change this will become a cyclohexane system. Interestingly now you are dealing with a cyclohexane system as there is connection between the nucleophile and this double bonded carbon. So, this will now form see this carbon will little bit push up as the nucleophile comes here. So, as if there are there are positive interactions. So, this carbon is going up. So, if carbon is going up that means you will get what is called a chair like transition state. See this is the nucleophile this is the H A I will I am showing these two I will tell you the reason why I am showing this H A and H E although they are not participating any uh, in the reaction. Now, you have a negative charge here. Okay. And you have O C O C S 3. So, now the negative charge and uh, actually you have a R group to start with where was that R the R was the beta. So, R was here okay. and so the R was now here remember it was on the back side. So, R was this part is in the back side. So, R is here. So, now this comes and kicks out the acetate and the product product is the cyclohexene again but the product will if you draw it in the chair form. So, you have a double bond here you have R here and you have nucleophile here. So, the important thing is this R and nucleophile will be cis to each other and there is a chair like transition state and this attack is what is called an anti parallel attack. Anti parallel attack because this is based on the the relationship of the attack with the axial hydrogen on the on this side okay. on the axial hydrogen on this carbon. So, because the axial hydrogen is alpha so pseudo axial so, the nucleophile is approaching from the opposite direction. So, this is called anti parallel attack. If the attack takes place from this side that will be called parallel attack, but this cannot happen because the serial elect electronic requirement says that this has to come from the same phase as the benzoate. Okay. So, this is one way of doing there are other see there will be anti parallel attack also, but that cannot involve this type of this type of cyclohexene uh, you have to it flip it and then do it. Okay. But, we are not going into because this is a foundation course. So, we are not going into that detail, uh, but remember that the way I drew the chair because I, I know that in the chair form in the chair form when you when you write a chair form these carbons and these carbons are both uh, 
above this above the plane horizontal plane containing this carbon. So, when I brought the nucleophile I know that this is going to go up that means there is already a carbon up and this is up. So, that gives you a chair if the nucleophile could if the nucleophile attack from this side which is not happening in this case, but that will go through a even if that happens. So, this carbon will will go downwards and in the half chair confirm in the that twist boat conformation this is what is the geometry of a twist boat. So, in the parallel attack uh, there will be the formation of the twist boat because that is going down. So, you remember these things that will be useful in your uh, in your uh, future courses uh, when you take an advanced stereo chemistry course. Okay. Because I again I tell you stereo chemistry is nothing but visualization of the 3 D molecules. So, this is one case where students get stuck that why it is a how do I know that it is going through a chair conformation I said that in the chair study the chair conformation that these two carbons are above this carbon uh, if you take a horizontal plane. So, that is what is happening this is your horizontal plane this is this carbon and this is going up. Okay. So, that type of tricks you have to have in your mind so that that will enable you to draw this type of structures. Okay. So, the stereo electronic requirement for S n 2 prime is that the attacking group the nucleophile should be coming from the same side of the leaving group. Okay. So, that takes care of the the S n the substitution nucleophilic substitution reactions in cyclohexane. Let us now take the uh, let us take the elimination aspect and do some problems. Okay. First problem uh, let us try to do there are this type of questions can be given that suppose you have this compound a cyclohexane substituted tri substituted cyclohexane this is what is called menthyl chloride you, you have heard of menthol a natural product menthyl chloride which gives anesthetic uh, sensation this menthyl chloride has this type of configuration there is another compound which is very similar but only the chlorine is alpha here the isopropyl is alpha chlorine is beta methyl is beta you have another compound where chlorine is alpha as well as isopropyl but the methyl remains beta this is called isomenthyl chloride Okay. Now, if you want to do dehydrohalogenation see base okay. you want to replace H C L dehydrohalogenation minus H C L by a base question is which one reacts faster or which one uh, okay, which one reacts faster or there may be some problem with some molecule uh, or, or which molecule has that problem. So, in order to solve this type of problem this is the reactivity that means which reacts faster that is which reacts faster. So, what will how do you answer this type of question you draw the the conformation the correct chair form of this molecule. So, where is your uh, isopropyl you see the isopropyl is alpha is having an alpha orientation. Now, you have lot of uh, flexibility see alpha you can put anywhere see, see but you have to see the you have to pick up the correct correct bond either equatorial or axial. Now, since to start with since this is a big group. So, I will try to put it in the alpha as well as in the equatorial position. So, my best bet is that I put this here okay. if I put that there then the next is chlorine chlorine is beta that means chlorine is also equatorial and then the methyl after one carbon. So, the methyl is also beta. So, this is the preferred conformation because if you flip it you will get all this as. So, the methyl is here now axial the chlorine is here axial and the isopropyl is here that is also axial. So, unstable. Okay. On the other hand, if you write the conformation of this, 
So, this will be again isopropyl I put in the alpha equatorial position, then the chlorine now it is alpha. So, it will be axial and now the methyl remains in the equatorial position. If you flip it now there is no requirement of flipping because this has got an axial chlorine an axial chlorine and that means you have to check whether it has got any hydrogen which can eliminate axial hydrogen yes there are two sets of axial hydrogens which can be eliminated. So, either this can be eliminated this HCl or this can be eliminated. So, basically you get two products one is this one this is isopropyl sorry this is the isopropyl and this is the methyl of course, here alpha beta uh, it is not in the chair form. So, you can uh, convert it into the write it in the cyclohexene. So, double bond this is isopropyl and this is your methyl that is one product and the other product is on this side. So, other product will be isopropyl remains and the double bond is here and the methyl is here. So, these are the two products a mixture of two products, but elimination will be facile because the chlorine is occupying an axial position and there are hydrogens opposite to it. On the other hand this molecule has a problem this molecule in the, the preferred conformation is this one where the chlorine is equatorial and all other substituents are equatorial. Now, in order to have dehydrohalogenation this molecule has to flip, but that requires enormous energy because you not only make chlorine uh, here if chlorine is axial if you flip it then chlorine becomes axial and yes you have a hydrogen here which is anti to it. Uh, first of all it requires much more uh, higher temperature to do this dehydro halogenation reaction that is number one and number two the difference with this is that it can only give one product the double bond can only be here that means it only gives this product and not the other one because the other one other place the hydrogen is equatorial it is not and the trans diaxial to the uh, it is not having a trans diaxial relationship. Okay. So, there are two things first of all this reacts very sluggishly if you want to do dehydrohalogenation you have to heat it up and then if and then the other difference is that it can only give this product and this product cannot be obtained from that because there is no anti anti hydrogen in this case. Okay. So, that is one uh, interesting problem menthyl chloride and isomenthyl chloride. Okay. Let me see another interesting example is dehydrohalogenation of this compound. dehydrohalogenation of this compound this will never undergo dehydrogenation dehydrohalogenation why because if you draw the preferred conformation so you have alternate alpha and equatorial a uh, alpha and beta chlorines but the interesting part is all the chlorines are in the uh, should be in the equatorial position that should be the most uh, favored conformation okay so, there is no question of any elimination here because the chlorine is not occupying any uh, axial orientation. If you flip it by applying energy thermal energy yes it will flip, but the problem is it requires lot of energy that is one and the other problem is even if you flip it you see there is still no axial hydrogen no axial hydrogen. Uh, adjacent to the chlorine. Okay. All the hydrogens are now equatorial. So, you do not have any situation where there is hydrogen and chlorine which are trans diaxial. So, it cannot eliminate. So, elimination is not possible means dehydro elimination not possible I am talking about dehydrohalogenation. Okay. I am talking about d hydrohalogenation. So, this is interesting. 
so many chlorines are there, but it cannot eliminate simply because in the ground state it is uh, uh, in the uh, ground state it exists in this all equatorial conformation. If you heat it strongly it will go to the diaxial, but still that is not capable of doing any elimination as no hydrogen is anti to the chlorine. Okay. Let us do just one more example of um, of where bond migration see where rearrangement rearrangement reactions in cyclohexanes rearrangement in cyclohexanes. Now, suppose you take okay, no tertiary butyl suppose you take cis 1 cis 1 amino uh, 2 amino I do not know which one is 2 amino 1 cyclohexanol. Okay. If it is cis then basically what you have you draw the cis compound which and N H 2. So, which will both are beta because it is cis. So, if both are beta then one has to be axial another has to be equatorial. Now, you know that uh, it is like if you add H N O 2 in this system. So, this will be converted into a diazo group and that will be this compound and it is very similar to what is known as pinacol pinacolone rearrangement. That in pinacol pinacolone rearrangement you have O H and O H and the moment you make OH2 plus here this goes out and one of the group migrates here. Okay. Now, group that migrates again like elimination here again in cyclohexane system that is true for here also the group that migrates should migrate uh, the group that is anti to it or the bond that migrates uh, should be anti to the carbon diazonium bond. Okay. So, now in this case you have to look that if the nitrogen leaves this bond is broken. So, what is anti to it? You can see the anti bonds of this is that one and also of course, this one also these two are the anti bonds to this to this nitrogen. So, in theory both can migrate either this can migrate and this leaves or this can migrate and this leaves but resulting in ring contraction the, there will be a contraction in ring. However, in reality only this migrates and that goes out. Why this migrates because the cation that is generated is stabilized by the oxygen. So, this does not migrate because there is no assisting group to help the cation to be stabilized. So, this migrates and what you get is this compound. this will be the cation and finally, a proton is lost and you get cyclopentane aldehyde. Okay. Now, this is one conformation of cis amino cyclohexanol. There is another if you flip it you get another conformation and in that conformation this weight will be equatorial and n h 2 will be axial. Okay. Now, you see the difference if you treat that the same thing because it is you are treating the same thing with H n O 2. So, H n O 2 will make the amine the diazo neum. So, that will be n 2 plus and this will be sorry this will be O H, but now you have a hydrogen the C H bond which is anti to the carbon nitrogen bond. So, this hydrogen will now migrate is in a position to migrate because it fulfills that stereo electronic requirement that the migrating group should have the bond which is anti to the bond that is being broken that is that is living with the bond which is containing the living group. So, this leaves now. So, resulting in
OH and this is plus. So, that is nothing but cyclohexanone. Sorry, that is nothing but cyclohexanone. Okay. So, in one case you get cyclopentin aldehyde and in the other case what you get is a cyclo uh, is a cyclohexanone. So, ultimately you will get a mixture of the two because there is hardly any energy difference between these between these two conformations huh? because their steric bulk is more or less very similar and in both the cases one is equatorial and the other is axial. Okay. So, I think uh, that is uh, the type of type of one we have rearrangement reaction we have discussed in cyclohexane and there are a lot of problems that can be generated from this type of pinacol pinacolone type of rearrangement okay, or epoxide formation. Huh? So, those are will be given in the uh, in the assignment uh, when we when we give the assignment when you attend this uh, online course. Okay. Thank you.